Do you struggle with how to store your ephemera, especially little teeny tiny ephemera? It falls out of everything and through the holes of everything. Well, today we have to show you the tutorial for a paper pouch that is wonderful for storing ephemera. This is originally an origami paper pouch. It was inspired by an origami paper pouch. It is not origami though, because we have actually used glue on it and we will use glue today. I feel that if I'm storing ephemera in it, the glue will make it last a little longer and make sure that it stays together if it gets pushed around so the origami won't fall apart and my uh, ephemera go everywhere. So the, a pouch opens like this. Of course, this little box always makes me think I need a hot dog and fries in it. So you can hold a lot of ephemera in there, but it's also got this nice little file tab here. So if you decided that you wanted to put it into um, some container and store a bunch of them, you could label them. Actually, you can't see that. We'll just do it this way. You could label them. And so as you flip through them, you can see on the labels exactly what is in there. So there are lots of different ways to close the covers. And we'll show you before we're done multiple ways. This way I've used a label type uh, closing. We made very recently, we made a whole bunch of little labels like this. And that's what inspired that closure. And on many of them, I took one of these little labels and put it inside a larger label um, to make it large enough to close. What I wanted to do, and it's closed with a Velcro dot, was make it large enough that if I started to stuff it with ephemera, and the Velcro dot is all the way to the edge there, and if it starts to stuff full of ephemera, and so it ends up being closed farther back, that this label was still wide enough to cover that whole opening. And that's why I didn't just put the small uh, label on there. There's another one that was one of the original small labels, just made a larger label out of it. You could use a strip of Velcro so that this dot could move along it. Um, I don't expect that I will make them that full. So I figured that if I make it close to the max here and then it can move, that's um, a good half inch to open up. Uh, that should be enough for me. You could also close them with ribbon. Now, I think that this would be a really cute closure if I'm putting it in a journal, and then I might make it smaller and um, glue it to the journal. It could be free floating. And if I do that, I might not put the file tab on it, but if I glued that to the journal, then the ribbon would be very pretty. And then it doesn't need the Velcro. It could open like that and have some surprises inside. But to use for my ephemera, for me personally, I find the ribbon too fiddly. It's too much work. Uh, it takes too much time to uh, close it. I would probably do this if I was making um, maybe as a gift for somebody and filling it full of surprises. I might add the Velcro on so that they could use it later uh, in the manner that I'm using it, but that makes a nice touch, just makes it pretty. Uh, so this is made from a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, very close to A4. So whichever you measure your paper by. This one is a little bit smaller, same type of closure. This one actually is being used to store some of my chipboard words, all from one particular pack. So I know what uh, kind of uh, theme or um, what style they're in. And so that is all in there. And then this one, even smaller, teeny tiny one. They're all exactly the same. You can just make them as big as you like, as big or as small. So let's get in to how to make them. And a couple of uh, little tips that I found along the way. So you can use eight and a half by 11 paper, as I mentioned that those are, or A4, or you could use 12 by 12. You would need to cut it down just a little bit. And actually that's not true. You can use 12 by 12 and make it 12 by 12, but instead of getting a rectangle, um, a pouch like this, it will be more square. So it might go to here and it would be square instead of rectangle. So if you want a little bit larger and square, then go ahead with the 12 by 12, it'll work just fine. If you'd like to have it be rectangle, then and keep with that same style matching some that maybe that you do with your eight and a half by 11, then we've found that if you just cut this to nine by 12, it works perfectly. And then you have a three inches off cut on either side, doesn't matter. 
uh, three inches off cut that you could use then to make a label that matches, to make your file uh, tab, or to punch out some ephemera, either way. So I'm going to start with eight and a half by 11 because it's already cut to size and ready to go. So also I have found that if you use, you can use paper or cardstock. This is a really thick cardstock. This one right here is made out of the, nope, that's, it's came out of the same paper pack, you can tell, uh, but it's a different print. But it is really, really thick. You can hear that. This was a little bit too thick. It was very difficult to work with, actually. So I wouldn't recommend super thick. You can see how it's tearing, cracking at some of those seams. I might reinforce it with washi, I don't know. Um, just because it was so thick, it was just difficult to work with. So I like cardstock because I feel it's going to hold up longer for me. Um, if you're not as hard on them as I am, then paper would be just fine because it works with paper. But I think uh, for me, a little lighter cardstock uh, was much easier to work with. And in the end, it worked better. So we're going to take our piece of uh, cardstock and it can be single sided or double sided. Either way, the only difference is that if it's double sided, when you open it, you'll have some print or color on the inside. So I would like this to be my outside. And so I'll let this print be my inside, although this is really nice vintaging on here. So I'm going to start with my outside down. So if you have a single sided piece of paper, you will want to um, start with your colored or print side down. You could make these with solid color. That'd be really pretty too. And then put some nice uh, decorated labels. See, even this is on the verge of being um, a little too thick. Okay, so I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold each side in. It's a little hard to see because of that print. So if I hold it up in the middle, I can tell exactly where my inside line is. I could take um, a spray bottle and give these a little spritz before folding them. And they I also could have scored them and then they might fold without cracking at all. So, all right, so I'm folding both of those to the center. This is super easy. Now, if you're in Happy Paper People Facebook group, when we are finished with our uh, Saturday Night Live, there will be in the group uh, files, there will be an instruction sheet on how to do this. If you are not, then we invite you to come to Happy Paper People on Facebook. It is the most amazing group of people that uh, you will ever get to know in the crafting community. And you can join us here on YouTube for lives and you can join us in Facebook for more fun as well. So I'm going to take this end. I'm leaving the two sides folded in. I'm folding one end up to the point. For me, it's easier to turn this around. So I can kind of guide that right there and I'm folding the other end in to the point. I never seem to get this exact, but it still works each time. So don't even worry. Don't even worry. This is one of those things that in the end, it always works no matter whether you're perfect on your folds or not. Okay, I'm going to go to the other end and do the same thing. And while I'm thinking about it, while you're here on YouTube, we are approaching 1,000 subscribers. So if you would like the opportunity to win a box, uh, it is a, a US flat rate box full of craft supplies. There is over $450 worth of supplies in that box. Then you can watch any or all videos on our YouTube channel, Happy Paper YouTube channel, and leave a comment. And in that comment, leave the hashtag Hashtag 1000 subs, 1000 SUBS. Leave a comment and in the comment, leave hashtag 1000 subs. As soon as we hit 1000 subs, we are going to pull all those hashtags, do a drawing, and give that box of goodies away. And I am anxious to get that box on the road to someone else's home. Okay, so what I did there after I folded both ends in is I just folded it back right at the point, okay, back to there. 
and then I went to the other end and did the same thing, folded it back at the point. Because this is thick cardstock, I'm using my bone folder to make sure I at least have a crease there. Okay, now I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to open it up and grab some adhesive, some glue. You could use um, double stick tape on this. I do think that it's a little easier with wet glue, but um, after you see it, you can make your choice and do it however you would like. So what I'm going to do now is put glue on the triangle. So you can see that crease right there. There's a crease right here and a crease right here. This is the triangle. And you can see, you'll be able to see probably easier. I know that pattern is probably difficult to see, but once the glue is down, I think you'll be able to see right where that triangle is, okay? So I'm going to put glue right on that triangle on the end. And then I'm going to fold both of these over and glue them right down onto that triangle. And while that's even still setting, I'm going to glue the triangle again. I just created a new triangle. So I'm going to put glue on this triangle. And I'm going to bring that down. And I know that these don't meet exactly, so I'm doing it this way so I can push this down with my fingers. I can pull this together and try to bring them fairly close near the center of that point, or maybe one's right on and one's a little off. I'm gonna to try to meet them up at the point as close as I can. If they're not exact, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter, but I will try to get them as close as I can to that point. Okay, once I push that triangle down, then let me grab a, a baby wipe. Make sure I've got one on hand here for glue. Okay, I'll bring that back up here. Okay, so we glued two triangles. I'm just going to make sure that it's all pressed down. It's actually easier just to leave it on the table like that because when I press one, I'm pressing both. Okay, so I'm going to let that uh, continue to dry in it here. I'm going to go to the other end and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to glue the triangle. Lay it down. There's a good time to bring these two points together right there. So I don't have a huge gap, but I don't want them to overlap. You do not want them to overlap because that'll create difficulty in closing. Okay, press that down. I know it's not dry yet, but it's holding. So then I will glue the second triangle. Lay that down, bring those two points together and push it on. Okay, and we'll give that just a chance to dry here. It doesn't take very long. I tend to like the Barely Art glue or the Art Glitter glue for this because it dries super fast and I need it to dry fast so that I can continue to bend and manipulate this pouch. Okay, there's my hot dog and fry box ready to go. And that, in essence, is the entire pouch right there. All we need to do is close it. Now, typically, if I was making a few of these at my desk, I would set this aside and just let it completely seal and dry that glue for another couple minutes while I folded another one. And I would fold several of them, and then I would go to the next step um, to do them together because it's uh, just as easy to do multiples of the same thing as it is for one. And if I know for sure it's dried, then now while I need to know here well if I know for sure it's dried then it's not going to come apart right all right so now I'm going to take the two points that I glued here and I'm going to push them straight in and with that this folds down and this folds down and there's your pouch so then I can look at this and this just happens to be facing upright so all of the writing is upright but if I happen to have it like this and I would say, okay, I would rather have it this way so that this is my top and that's my bottom. 
you could choose however you want that. Okay, so that is good to go right there. So now all I need is a closure. Now you can see the gap between here and here. If there's any gap here, which is totally fine, but that's where tiny ephemera could fall out or even larger ephemera, it just flat stickers and things. So I want to make my closure cover at least from here to here. That's my goal. So the original one that, that um, Miss Linda had made that inspired this whole thing came down and covered almost the whole front. It was like a big envelope flap and it was so pretty. So at the end of this, I'm going to um, bring Candy and Linda on and show you um, some of theirs as well that are different than mine so that you'll be able to see them. But I'm going to make a closure. I'm going to do the same as I did with these and use one of the labels that I made the other day, make a little larger label to put it here. I'm going to do a Velcro closer, closure and then I'm going to do the tab. So I've got some of those labels here. Now this is one piece of paper, but it looks like um, a collaged piece of paper. So I could even choose to take one of these um, this is just paper that's been collaged on. Actually, that one would be really pretty and it's just about the right size. Wow, how does that work? Um, I could. These are index cards, so I would probably cut one of those down, although it doesn't matter if it's that large. It's still covering what needs to be covered. I just happen to really like the paper underneath it, and so I'd really like to um, be able to see it. That's pretty as well, but you know what? This The colors are nice and the size is nice. I will um, cut the corners. Okay, so let's find us a little label that can go inside of here. Here's some of the labels we made last week. We'll see some of these that aren't even complete yet. Let's see, a music one would be nice there. That be nice there. I feel like we need a little more contrast in color. That one actually would be really nice. So, all right. So I'm going to take my corner chomper that is um, angles and I'm going to use the large angle on these corners here. Okay, and let's see if I've got just a little bit of ink on this brush just to take the white edge off of that index card. This is a great way to use up scraps. Anytime I'm doing a project and I end up with all these little teeny tiny offcuts, some bigger than others, before I clear up, I just grab a couple index cards and I just start um, gluing little strips of them, little strips on. That's all I do. And if I'm doing a project, then I know all those little strips are going to coordinate because they were working in my project. So they don't have to be exactly the same. In fact, I don't want them exactly the same. I find that the best ones turn out when there's multiple patterns, multiple colors, some dark, some light. Um, then it really has the best effect. So cool. I do like that um, a lot. Like, whoops. Okay, so let's get... I can see an edge coming up there. Let's see if I can get a little bit of glue underneath that. And glue that one down. Okay, so then I'm going to put glue on the back of this label. So just making these pouches this week, I'm thinking that it's really helpful to have a whole bunch of these labels made up ahead of time. I've used them, as you can see, on every one of these pouches. And I've used them on other things as well. And they are so much fun to make. Those were um, something that Candy brought to us and inspired um, to make these little labels. They are so much fun to make. And they have been so useful on so many things. So I think that I'm going to um, have to make some of those regularly. When I'm cleaning up scraps and I've got too many scraps, that's all we did with those uh, was use scraps to make them. Okay. So now as I decide where to place this on the cover, I know that I need something attached on the top 
and then I need to be able to put Velcro on the bottom. I also know that if I start stuffing the envelope and it gets a little bit fatter, a little bit fatter, that could come a little bit apart. So I want to have probably a little bit more on the bottom than on the top, although that is completely up to you. Um, I would say for me, probably not much more on the bottom than the top because I'm probably not going to stuff them too fat. I will do a number of these pouches and be able to separate ephemera out. I'm going to turn it around so that this is the top. I'm going to lay my, this is just how I found as easy as for me. There are a lot of different ways to put a label on. You could just leave it how it was and just set it right down on the front. But I'm going to just set that right there. That way I make sure that I get it over all the glue and I don't have extra glue on the label. It may not be perfectly straight. I'll take care of that. So that when I turn it over here, I don't have glue showing on the back of that. And when I do this, now I'm gluing it together, gl gluing it closed. But I can turn it around. I can straighten that out. You always have a couple seconds. Especially if you put plentiful art glitter glue or barely art glue, you still got a couple seconds. Okay, then I'll turn it back just so I can rub it down nice and tight. And that needs a minute then to dry. So while that's drying, let's put the top back on the glue. Although we're going to use it again in a minute. And I'm going to grab my Velcro. It should be right inside my drawer here. So I've got some round pieces and I've got some square pieces and hmm, I must, I was using the round pieces on those others. I must have left the round pieces out because they're not in my drawer where they should be. So here's some square pieces. So I can look at that and say, is that sufficient or is that way too big? Maybe I even can cut that in half because it seems pretty large, or maybe I want about two thirds of it. And if I turn it this way, so it is vertical instead of horizontal, there is room for it to expand if I fill this up. So I think I'm going to grab scissors and I think I will cut this down a little bit. I just probably don't need it quite that large. Um, I don't want it to be, you know, a big eyesore. I'm gonna go a little more than half and it's got these nice little grooves in it. So I can just cut right down a groove. There we go. Okay, and then how do I make sure that those are the same size? I take this little piece and I put it on this little piece right where it would go. Make sure my edges are lined up together. And then I just cut right there. And then they're the exact same size. So then I can take this half or third and with that third, there will be something smaller that needs a smaller um, Velcro on it. Okay. Now, I don't know that it makes any difference, but I happen to like the fuzzy side of the Velcro, or I should say looped um, connectors because there are other brands. These actually happen to be Velcro, so I am correct in saying that. But I happen to like the fuzzy side, the soft side on the top. I don't know that it make, makes any darn difference though, so totally up to you. It does have sticky on the back and it is really strong. However, I'm still going to give it just a little bit of Barely Art on there to help it stay. Then I'm gonna go back here and I'm looking at the label, it's gonna be on the label. I don't want it right on the edge. I don't want it too far back. So it's going to be just inside the edge. I'm gonna center it, you know, eyeball center as much as possible. Okay. And then the easiest way to um, make sure that they are lined up is just take the other half and put it on. You look at that and make sure that they are lined up. Put the top half, what would be the bottom half, on top of it. Okay. And then I'm going to peel the backing off of that one. Now you can buy Velcro. Uh, the, the dots that I have that are probably floating around my desk somewhere, 
Maybe I'll find those in a minute. Those I got at Dollar Tree, a whole pack of Velcro dots for a dollar, or I guess now they're a dollar fifty. Um, these came in a pack uh, or a package that just had a bunch of squares in it. Uh, I also have a roll, like, I don't know, 50 feet or 100 feet or something. And it's about that wide, about an inch wide. And it's just this huge roll of Velcro, both sides together. And you can just cut off however much Velcro you need. So you can get Velcro or any other brand of this type of uh, hook and loop closure. Um, not very expensively and have it on hand for this kind of project. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that closed for a minute uh, just to give it time to adhere on both sides. I don't want to rip that Velcro open and then have it pull up. So, okay, so I'll let that sit there while we make the file tab. So file tabs are super simple. There are lots of different ways to make them. These are all the same and you notice they do have a little whoop -dee on it because I used my uh, file tab punch board. Now you can use a file tab punch board or you can, you know, and it works, it makes small, medium and large tabs. So this one was a small, this one was a medium, a little bit larger you can see, and then this one was a large. So you can do file tabs of any size but you don't have to have a punch board to do these. There's just lots of different ways to make them. So let me grab a um, piece of paper that's coordinating. So if you're using a nine by 12 or 12 by 12 and you cut it down to nine by 12, you've got three inches off cut that you can use to make a backing for your label, to make your, um, like this is the same piece of paper that I cut down the eight and a half by 11 to make the smaller one. And so when I put it on there, unless you look and see that that's glued on there, it all looks like one piece. And that's the other side. There's the other side. You know, done exactly in that manner. Same thing here. This is the same paper. This one is different paper. It's from the same paper pack, but it's coordinating different paper. But I used that for this back here so that they would be um, matching. Actually, that is the same paper. Um, well, I'm sorry, it's not the same. It's, it is coordinating though. The other side of that, is, as you can see, is the same as that one. Um, it, it came out of the same paper pack. Let me just leave it at that. Um, same thing here. So the back of that is the same stripe as on the one we just saw. And it's got the gold and the old writing and all that. It just matched nicely. So that was fine, you know, to use that. And that one was just black. So actually this one, I believe is the same. Oh, nope. Look at that. This one is this one, but I really didn't want that pattern on the back. Just didn't match at all. So all I did was cut out a piece of black and glue the back the black on the back, which makes this double thick, a little bit um, more sturdy. And, um, you know, it's only aesthetics. It doesn't really matter. You can use anything you want on there. So what do I want to use on this? If I grab, um, if I grab a piece of, that's not the same paper. If I grab a piece of the same paper, what is on the back is that green. That would be here. I don't know if I want that or not, or if it even matters, but make sure that glue is dried there. That is what's on the inside. So would probably be just fine. So if I take that and decide to use that, um, I can make one on my punch board, but let me also show you, maybe you don't have a punch board, just want to make a file folder tab without a punch board. Let me first, Put the glue pin in the glue. I hear you yelling out there. Put the glue pin in before it dries up. The air must be really dry this winter because a lot of us have been having um, issues with glue getting all clogged up. Um, the other thing that you could do here, as I just looked over and saw my bin of scraps sitting here, you don't have to use a new page that's coordinating. I could go through my bin of scraps here and find a scrap that is already... Um, cut down or just a you know part and piece of something that coordinates um, to use that. And as I'm looking over here, I've got this that's already been cut down. So it's an off cut. That would work just fine. Um, and then there's a couple others from that same pack. 
there's this one that's been cut down and I like that a lot and I think that that would look really cool and if I make it so that the tab is right here it would even have that line for writing and then the rest of it go across that's a pretty tab and the back is a teal not unlike this one a slightly different color but pattern is very very similar so because that's already been cut down a little bit you can't tell it's not been cut down a lot i think i will use that and i will show you how we'll make that file tab all right so on these uh i think i did about three quarters of an inch let me double check that yeah, so, and you can make this go down as far as you want. If you aren't crazy about here and what you have on the back of your tab paper you really like, make it longer. Um, I only use three quarters of an inch because that's all I need to get that tab on there. And when it's the same, you can't even tell. So, but you could make it, you know, long enough to cover the whole thing. So if I use three quarters of an inch there and then the tab is st sticking up from it. And if I'm going to make my own, I'm probably not going to do the little whoopties here. I'm just going to do this type of thing. So, um, therefore, I'm going to make it maybe not quite as tall, but um, you can make that as tall as you want. This whole thing is about three quarters of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch, and then we'll look at it and see if we want to cut it down. And so we can show you how to cut it down as well. So I need three quarters of an inch for the tab. I need three quarters of an inch for the back. That is um, an inch and a half. So I'm going to go over here and it's this end that I really want. So I'm gonna start right there, an inch and a half. And I know this paper is longer than my paper trimmer. It doesn't matter when I'm, when I'm working on a lot of little stuff like this. I really like having this little paper trimmer out and I just cut as far as I go and then I just slide it down and I lock it in right into the blade. And then I know I was at an inch and a half. I make sure that this end is at an inch and a half. And I know I'm getting a straight cut. Works every time. I do it on my 12 by 12 paper all the time. I love my long trimmer, but I, I really like this one when I'm just working on little stuff like this. Okay, so I'm going to then use um, three quarters of an inch. So that's half of this. Let's see where two, three, that is almost, that is almost right there with those little lines. It's easy to tell. I'm going to use half of this to put behind and half of it's going to be the tab up. Now, I also know that if I would like to have this as my tab so that I could write on it and I can make the tab as long as I want. So maybe I'll start it right here. So I get this um, measuring tape in there which looks really cool. And then I'll add that. So I've got that writing room. I could even go to there if I wanted, but I'll do that. So I'm going to, because even on something like this, I always feel like I just can't cut it straight with scissors. I'm going to grab my trimmer again, and I'm going to cut it right at that measuring tape. So that's going to be my very edge like that. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, come to the end of the, the lines here where I'll want the end of my file tab to be. And then what I need to do is cut that. This one's the easiest to see with the black. So I'm right here. I need to cut that whole half off right up there. So first of all, let me shorten this up so it's easier to work with. So I bring my pouch back up and see how long do I need it. And again, this is gonna be an eyeball. You could measure it exact, but, and it's, it is going to, I can't give you that measurement because it depends on how big your folds are, how thick your paper is. Um, and I could be a millimeter off. So it just doesn't really matter if it's exactly to the edge. So that I will just clip like that. And I'm not worried about that because I know that this whole half up here is coming off. The only thing that's going to be sticking up is that tab over there. All right. So now what I want to do is say three quarters of an inch is going to be glued on three quarters of an inch is coming off and I'm going right up to this. Now this makes it really easy because I've got lines there marking it for me and I've got change of pattern. 
So it's real easy to mark my line of delineation there, my point of delineation. If you don't have that, then you wanna say, how long do I want my tab? And then go um, maybe draw a faint line in pencil right down here. So you know exactly where you wanna be, okay? So then I'm going to cut, I wanna cut three quarters of an inch is gonna glued on, three quarters of an inch is coming off. So I'm gonna put it right at three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to cut it right down to where the mark of that line of delineation, either you drew it in or you marked it by something on the design to tell. And I know it's right where those start to, um, where they meet, where those lines start. So then I can come over here and I can cut. And you could do this with scissors as well. I honestly am more comfortable doing this with a paper trimmer than scissors because I just don't feel like I cut straight. So it's so much easier for me to do it with a paper trimmer. Now, I didn't go all the way in on this cut because I don't want to go too far. And by doing it almost all the way and then doing that one, I make sure that I can clip in that way and have it exact. And then I've not cut into my tab or I've not cut into this. Super easy. Then all I'm going to do is grab my corner rounder and pick your size or your decoration or whatever you want and round that corner. Whoops, I meant to do the quarter inch. That was the half inch. That was the big one. Doesn't matter. I just wanted the smaller one. Now, if you come over here and you go, oh, that is not going to fit in there because it's got this sticking out. There's two things that you can do. Either you take this and you fold it right at your mark, okay? If you fold it, now there will be nothing in the way and you can stick it in there and cut. Or you grab your scissors and you look at this and you just come over here and you give it a little rounded corner. Um, I do this more frequently with the quarter inch, which is the smaller one. So that is much easier for me. I'm trying to do the bigger one without doing it too big. That's a little awkward for me, but it's okay. And then I'll just look at it, go over here, take a look at it. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, so then you say, all right, I see how far that is going to be sticking up. Exactly that far. Well, that's kind of a big dab. Maybe it's not, maybe it's okay, because it's really not very long. And now that I look at it, it could have been longer. The large size from my tab punch board was longer, so it could have been longer. But if I think it sticks up a little too much, then all I do is bring it over here. And again, I've got these nice lines on it, so that makes it real easy. I'm just gonna clip the top off, trim the top off right at that first line. Okay. And then all this does is give me a tiny little point there. I'll clip that off. And now I have those tighter edges. Now, do you need to use a corner rounder? No. If you like straight corners, square corners, absolutely keep them. There you go. So that one is ready to go. So they can be square corners. They can be rounded corners. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. I'm going to put the glue on the smaller of the two things that I'm putting together. I know I tell you that all the time, but if you put it on the smaller item, then you don't have to wonder how much glue you need. You know exactly how much glue you need. Probably overdid it in the glue, but I want to make sure that it sticks. I kind of tend to be an overdue kind of gal. I'm going to double check and make sure that that's my top so I don't glue it on the bottom accidentally. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to bring that around just so I can get a hold of it easily. And I'm going to set that right on top. And I know it's going to match up with this edge. It's going to match up with that edge. And then when I come around, I know that the top edge is going to match up. So I can just go across it, make sure that it's all down. And when it is, then it's going to be perfectly even. Okay. A little too much glue. And I'll just press it down for a minute. Give it a chance for that glue to dry. I'll flip it over, see if there's any glue squeezed out that I need to rub off. There we go. 
and there you have it an origami inspired pouch that is glued so that it will last a little bit longer that you can use for so many things these are super cute little gift pouches if you're sending happy mail and you like to uh, fussy cut this is a great pouch to hold some fussy cuts in and then they can use the pouch as well later ongoing um, they're just super cute uh, it's a fun little surprise pouch to have in a journal. So uh, again, now uh, let me give you the end. One, two, three, four. It's a little over four, uh, four and a quarter plus the tab by six and a half. So four and a quarter by six and a half. So it's not too big to put in a journal like that. Again, I probably wouldn't put it, put the tab on it unless I was leaving it free floating. But if I was going to put it, glue it in a journal, like this or like this, so they could just open it and find the surprises inside, then I probably wouldn't um, leave the, or have even put the tab on it. And then that um, ribbon was really cute to have on it. But that is um, in a nutshell, how you make these cute little pouches. I would like to quickly, before we finish the tutorial here, bring Candy and Linda onto the screen so that you can see the ones that they have done that are different than mine. So I'm going to bring them on here really quickly. We'll give them some sound. There we are. We'll give them some sound and then I'm going to one by one put them on full screen so that included in the tu tutorial you will see um, the ones that they have made. Okay, so there's uh, Candy, do you want to give yourself some sound? And let's go to you first. Here's Candy full screen. There's her pretty pouches. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. Here's mine. This this one I did with the elastic closure. Another great idea, just like your traveler's notebook. Yeah, just a little elastic closure with this. Is that a brad that you put on there? Oh, eyelet. Or eyelet. Okay. An eyelet. I put an eyelet on there with a policy type like closure. Mm hmm And then put a piece of paper on the back of it to hold it. The, the rubber in. The great black. idea. That's that box. I did another one with a skinnier label. With the I like the elastic closure. Mm -hmm. Easy to use. Yeah. Uh, this one is a Velcro with a tab. That's pretty. And this one I tied and put with wax thread. Mm, there's another option. We put little baubles on it. Um, and then I have wallpaper inside. Great idea. Love that wallpaper. It is so pretty. So wallpaper with, now your outside then is not cardstock. It's regular paper? It was a digital. A digital. Okay. So she took an extra page from a digital she had. Yeah. Glued it to wallpaper. So she has that gorgeous wallpaper inside. Okay. And then the wraparound closure. So there are many ways to close these, many ways to do your closure on the front. Those are really pretty. Thank you, Candy. Okay, I'm going to flip over here to Linda. Hello, Hello Miss Linda, who instigated this whole thing. Would you like well, to show us your closures? Well, I'm very sorry. I instigated the whole thing. Oh, don't be. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I have to say I sent the pretty ones to Candy. Yes, <laughs> they were beautiful. If Candy has them handy, she can pull them out and show us the ones that Linda made. So this is this is my closure for the first ones mm -hmm. that I did. And I have this tab, and I have I had uh, six by six paper that I made the closure for, and I used the Velcro and filled it up. Although I filled Candy's much much more than this <laughs> i really well i really like the way your closure tab covers it, it's like an envelope flap yes yes i really and, like that a lot and if, if i were sending things to people i would do that and i would put a little label that said what was inside cute, cute idea so this one i made out of uh jelly print oh, oh. just plain the copy paper and the top is again that six by six sorry graphic 45 paper <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing in here yet but it 
it, it works. Um, it yes. works fine. And, and it's, it's so just, pretty. And it's just copy paper with a gel print on it. This one is 65 pound uh, cardstock. Okay. With a graphic 45 paper on it and okay. a tab and things like that. With, I like the Velcro because if you're really going to fill them up with a lot of stuff, you have room to move it up if it gets really full. And this one is just a piece of book page mm. and a cluster to close it. Oh, that's a cute idea. Yeah, I, 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 I have taken to clusters. Like whenever I can't think of anything else to do, I just see and cluster. make clusters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for showing those. Okay, so I'm going to go back here for a moment. Okay, while they were showing you those, I quickly added on the last piece I wanted to share with you. And it's just a, a way to decorate them. Um, if I was going to send it to someone, maybe I would add an eyelid here with uh, a little a dangle of some sort, um, you know, a charm, anything, you know how you do, you put them on all kinds of stuff. So I might that might add that um, on there, you could put it on the inside, you could even put it on the the uh, label closure or the flap. See how Linda's was like a whole envelope front of that. I love that idea of using solid color paper for the pouch and then making that envelope out of um, some cool vintage paper or gel prints or um, uh, what am I, digis like Candy was using or just a cool vintage uh, print that you have on a piece of paper that you love. But instead of using the whole thing, you're just doing the flap because that's what you see mostly, right? So thank you for joining us today. We really do appreciate that. Um, come join us on Happy Paper People in Happy Paper People on Facebook in Facebook. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that you will be notified for all the fun things that happen right here on Happy Paper People on YouTube. This is where a lot of the fun happens, right here. We do all kinds of lives, parties, fun, sales, uh, tutorials. We do it all. We just have a ton of fun and it's the nicest group of people you'll ever meet. So we um, invite you and welcome you to Happy Paper People on our YouTube channel. So thanks again for joining us and I hope that you have a lot of fun making these pouches yourself. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.